Hello, everyone. This is Bradley. Recently, there were multiple people who asked the questions related to initial transform node. I think it's very important to address this question. In this two-part series of tutorial, I'm going to make a very simple animation inspired, inspired by the others on YouTube. The first part of this series is to address the usage of initial transform node, and thus I also put a title of a fundamental on that, because I hope more people can view this topic, whether you're going to replicate my animation or not. The second part of this series, I basically finish this simple animation using animation nodes. This method is highly recommended for it to use instead of many other methods proposed on YouTube channel related to animation nodes. The reason will be specifically discussed in the second part. The second part of the tutorial may have a different name and thus the link of it will be provided in the description once published. So let's start. So here we're in Blender and uh, I have a primitive torus. I'm just going to uh, the, my camera and rotate this torus to 90 degrees so that I am watching this uh, torus. And here I'm going to add a particle system so that I can uh, self-fracture this object. In edit goes to preference and you just need to search for self-fracture and just enable this add-on. This add-on goes with, comes with Blender, and there are many different tutorials talking about this add-on. You just hit F3 and uh, search for this self fracture. Uh, there are many tutorials talking about this add-on. I don't want to uh, spend too much time talking about that because it's not the topic of this tutorial. I'm just going to put the source limit to 200 and just hit OK. So right after, uh, right at the moment that we have finished, so uh, we are actually automatically selecting all these kind of fractured pieces and the original object has been kept but it's not selected. So this is a very nice moment that you can just hit M and you can edit that to a new collection but just call that fractures. So now every object has been into a new collection and I can disable the original collection that contains our original object. So now I have all these kind of pieces and then we can move to the animation nodes. So let's go to the animation nodes and let's go to the camera. Uh, the first node I'm going to call is I'm going to hit control A and type in collection info. And I'm going to select the fractures collection. And if I select the node and hit W, goes to view, look at all objects. I know that I'm outputting 192 objects from this collection, okay? This is good. Next thing, I would like to define the location of all these kind of torus to make all the kind of motion graphics viewed in the future. So I'm going to search for object matrix output node. So, and before, uh, uh, I want to remind, uh, before I do everything further, I want to remind you uh, in the past, I've made a series of tutorials talking about the difference between the matrices and the vectors. You can see the orange color are the same, right? Uh, I highly recommend you to watch that series of tutorials. You can go to the link on the right upper corner uh, because these, it, the tutorial essentially includes so important information that people may just overlook. And it explains many other things like what's the difference between them and so on and so forth. But basically, matrix uh, can be used to define the location of all these objects. And if we take a look with all these kind of pieces, you can see each of them have a different locations. So now if I put these objects, the black into the black socket, which is object the sockets, then uh, you don't necessarily to follow. Please don't follow uh, because it's a wrong thing to do. If I put that into socket, then immediately, boom, I lost my torus. All these kind of pieces goes to the center of the wood because their origin, uh, their location has been written as 000. Since you are not putting anything into these matrices, there is no way to really revert this back because we are doing something wrong. So you just have to hit Ctrl Z and you may potentially fail due to some reason. But anyway, this is the case. So we cannot directly um, do these things at this moment. So what should we do? Here is a node that we need to use, which is called the initial transform node. This initial transform node is going to record a location of all these kind of pieces so that we can put the matrices to the, to, uh, to the matrices to redefine the original locations after we setting up this object to object. 
But before we are actually using this initial transform, we need to select all these kind of fracture pieces. And then we go to hit N. And in this M panel, we can see there is a AM panel. And you can see viewport and IDT and the initial transform index and so on and so forth. Sometimes you do not see this initial transform. Uh, I suggest you just select elsewhere or just randomly select all these kind of objects. Uh, click elsewhere or doing whatever, change the viewport or even restart the blender. Finally, you will see all these kind of things. And you just uh, hit A, select all these kind of objects and use uh, hit this from uh, current transform. So now you are recording a single um, transform data for location, rotation, and scale. And this is good enough. All these kind of objects, uh, as you can take a look, they have its own initial transform information. And uh, so now this initial transform node contains a, has recorded its initial location. So now if I put this object into the object socket, everything has been crushed as it has been shown earlier. But what we can do is to put these matrices into matrix, then everything has been recovered. So this is a very important aspect of this object ID key node or initial transform node, because it helps you to recover the initial states of all these object location, especially after you're fracturing an object. We have basically finished here with these three nodes and with the, about the initial transform node. But there are several more things that I would like to discuss. Is uh, you usually start with two default um, ID key that has been origin, uh, already um, made for you. One is initial transform and the other is index. These are not the same. Index is kind of more bizarre things I don't want to like to discuss. I barely, I haven't ever used index. But it basically just uh, you create a ID key. For example, the um, uh, which is the first object in the list, which is the second object in the list. I really don't want to talk about this because I don't see a usage of that. So no. So let's forget about this index. Just hide that. Uh, initial transform is the one that I really use very frequently because if you're working with fractal object and so on and so forth. And for this initial transform, it's really recording the f from the current transform which also means that it does not record the uh, keyframe information. So it's just a static. And another thing is it can only record a single information. So it says current transform, you cannot record a second transform data. What you need to do if you would like to record the second transform data is that you need to hit a need this new button and create a new ID key, so new transform. So if I had this in new transform, in new transform, there is almost the same panel. You still can hit another new uh, from current transform. Okay. So now what we can do is if I go back to the frame, so you can switch between the initial transform and the new transform. Maybe this is something that you would like to do, like using this uh, mix matrix node. and something that they can potentially do. And using this vector. So something that you can potentially do, or I don't know what you actually would like to do. So this is one thinking process of using this node. And this is almost all about it. But I barely usually use multiple ID keys because I think these are useless. I usually just only have the most basic initial transform and this is it. So uh, this is really all about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.